Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Guild Wars 2 PvP build guide with gameplay. This is a Celestial Dag Focus Elementalist tank build. I've been putting out a lot more tank builds because this whole meta is based around pretty much sustaining, and it's a sustain meta. And you usually run four sustain or four bunker classes, like a Selly Scrapper NG, an Elementalist Bunker, a Chrono Bunker Mesma, and something like that and then you usually run one power class and one condi class for an optimal team comp if you want to climb in your guild group or anything like that I'll upload another video soon of my league thing I passed tier 2 so we're into tier 3 we'll make a video of a game in tier 3 slowly climbing our way up it took a long time to get past tier 2 kept traversing kept getting up to like 4 pips in versing really hard teams dropping back to like all the way to 1 then climbing back up to 4, dropping back down. But yeah, let's get into the build here. Open this up, this as well. Not that. Okay, so traits are up here. And the weapons and everything are over here. So dagger and focus offhand. I like leeching and energy sigil. Energy for the extra dodge when you switch attunements. You can also run something like um, geomancy, anything on swap swap so you can pretty much run any of these sigils intelligence is pretty bad hmm hydromancy is not bad geomancy is pretty good dooms pretty good battles pretty good as well uh, renewal I don't really like this one either and speed is pretty good as well but yeah you can run whatever you want but you have to run energy then we have durability rune for the toughness 25% boon duration even though it says 20% on this rune, it gives you 25 and it gives you toughness and vitality as well, so we're a bit tankier. Then Celestial Amulet, of course, for the massive everything, so we actually put out a lot of healing power as well, and power precision, just everything is pretty good. We don't really use the ferocity that much, we don't put out that much damage on the build, unless we build up a lot of might, which we can do with our fire. But yep, it's not bad there. Um, so this is these are the things you run here. Onto the traits, we have Water, Earth, and Tempest. So there's two variants of this Dagger Focus build. You can either run All Shouts and Aura Share, or you can either run like um, All Cantrips. But I like to run the Wash the Pain Away heal, because that's a very powerful heal skill. And the whole premise of the build is built around Diamond Skin Trait, which means... When you're above 16.6k health, you can't take conditions. So you want to use as much condition clear as possible. You have a lot of condition clear from these two traits. And um, so yeah, all our cantrips give us regen. And whenever we get regen, we remove condition. And attuning to water. Oh no, it doesn't. But um, water overload gives us regen. And... All our cantrips give us regen, and that's pretty good. So we have a lot of Condi Clear as well. This is also a Condi Clear skill. Clears four conditions from you, because three plus the regen. And water. In the water, we also have... Um, you get a passive 136 heal per second. Not too bad. And then gain regen every 20 seconds when you're crit. So once again, that's pretty good. So more regen is more Condi Clear. And we have... Um, Heal nearby allies when switching into water attunement, pretty good for a bit of extra healing. And then cantrips grant regen and vigor, so <coughs> regen and vigor is very prominent in this build because auras also apply regen and vigor. And the regen gives you condi clear and the vigor gives you more dodges which is more survivability pretty much. And healing done to allies is increased. So, Earth, we have um, Gain Toughness while in Earth, not bad, makes you a bit tankier. Um, gain Protection when applying an Aura to yourself or an ally. So, um, that's one of the stronger traits to run if you run um, Shouts, because the Shouts give you Auras. But if you're not running Shouts, you can also run the Passive Armor of Earth when you drop below 50. Or, um, yeah, that's pretty good there. Then we have Damage Foes and Cripple them whenever you switch to Earth. So that's mainly for slowing people down when they're rushing off point or something like that. You cripple them. Then, oh, so um, this you recover quick, more quickly from Cripple and Immobilize. But that's not the main reason we take this trait, because it reduces recharge on earth, all Earth weapon skills by 33%. 
So our things like our magnetic wave and obsidian flesh are up a lot more often. So this is a 16 second cooldown now. If we don't take the trait, it's 25, so that's like a 10 second difference pretty much. So this is one of the main um, weapon skills with the build as well, I'll go through that in a second. And you take less damage when you're in melee range, so try and be up in people's faces, don't let a dragon hunter snipe you from far away. Then diamond skin, like I said, conditions can't be applied to you, so this is anything ranging from like bleeding, immobilize, poison, chill, cripple, um, confusion, any condition at all. So people can't even slow you down with these conditions. So you always want to try and use your heal skills to heal up. If you manage to go below 90%, you can pop all these Condi Clear skills that you have and your heal skill to pop you right back up and even Obsidian Flesh or Magnetic Wave, which clears three conditions. It's a Reflect and it's a Blast Finisher, so it's pretty strong, but the main use of it is to clear three conditions. And so Lockdown, if you get stunned a lot with the build, um, each of your overloads is a stun break. Your Earth Overload gives you stability. You have Armor of Earth, and you have a second passive Armor of Earth, so you don't need to worry much about that. You're pretty fine in re regards to stun breaks. Even if you get CC'd, you can blink away, although it's not a stun break. I'll try and let the warrior hit us here. They usually stun you sometimes. Come on, there we go, we can just blink away. We we were still locked down, but then we can get stability so he can't lock us down. And switch to fire for a bit of damage. You have a passive aura on your fire five, and your earth, I mean your dagger three as well as another passive aura which stuns them as well. And your lightning aura is probably your highest damage, although it's still not very much. And Condi Clear. So then in Tempest we have whenever you use an overload and finish the overload, you gain um, you gain an aura, so that aura heals you as well with this trait. But then like I said, whenever you get an aura, you get regen and vigor, so that's more Condi Clear because of the regen. And um, gain protection whenever you overload attunement, and protection is actually 40% reduced damage instead of um, instead of 33%. So an extra 7% damage reduction from a minor trait, pretty good. And we actually have quite a bit of protection uptime as well, and we actually have a lot of healing with the build and sustain as well, so then whenever you apply an aura you gain um, 1000 health and you also gain frost aura when you drop below 75%, that's what we happened just then and you have a projectile block here with swirling winds, so let's see the thief the thief is unable to shoot us with the pistol shit okay he's dead anyway magnetic aura is also pretty good for stomps because the person hitting you reflects their own skills back to you, so like a warrior when he does the throw rock to interrupt you, will get reflected back to him. Same with thief's projectiles, um, but engineer as well will get reflected back to them. But yeah, so those are some pretty good traits in Tempest. Also again, swiftness when overloading an attunement, and this is a lightning field, and it gives you swiftness, so you can build up a bit of swiftness at the start of the game with overload air. But remember, swirling winds is a key skill, blocks all um, incoming projectiles unless they're unblockable. You also have a knockdown here to kind of take someone out of the fight and then you, um, overload air is one of your main sources of damage. <coughs> Earth is very defensive, also remember while you use obsidian flesh you can't capture a point so try and use it whenever someone else is on the point with you so you don't lose the point because the whole meta is pretty much right now so staying on point, being unkillable and having one or two other people dealing some damage for you then you just all group up and res them. So yeah, that's what I've encountered a lot recently in PvP. And that's pretty much the build. I'll head into a game in a bit here, and see you guys in a minute. Just gonna start recording again just before the queue pops here, talk about a few things. So, um, in PvP leagues, to climb up faster, a lot of people have been doing this thing called tanking your MMR. I won't lie, I did this a little bit, but the basic thing is you get to a tier like I am in now. So I did this when I was in tier 1. So I can't go down tiers now because in this division you can't lose tiers. These are the tiers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These single things are points or pips as they're called. So right now I can't go down to tier 2 again. I can only move up from here. So basically I could intentionally lose like 50 games here and lower my MMR, which is the score of like my matchmaking, and then I would climb up quite a lot easier because I'd be versing 
worse players or more inexperienced players, for example. And that is why you see quite a lot of people who are in like Ruby and Diamond already, and that's pretty shocking. I actually got queued up against someone who was in Diamond, God knows how, and that was a five man pre made. They had all Sapphire, Sapphire was their lowest rank. Um, a ruby and a diamond as well. I have not not seen a legendary yet though, but the badges look really cool. Yeah. So yep, I'm, I'll hopefully make it to at least diamond before the season ends. It is the 26th over there, and it, again, the achievements are pretty much deadlocked here. You can't really progress. Where is it? Competitive. Yeah, you can't really get past the 10th one because you have to play for 15 days. And cool, Q popped here. So yeah, also, Scepter is a suitable replacement for the Dagger in this build, although you lose your melee pressure and the aura. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really mind Scepter. It's a lot slower of a weapon set, apart from the air, and we don't run fresh air, so... If you were to run Scepter with the build, it would probably most likely be Water, Air, Tempest, but that's a different build. But yeah, I've seen a lot of these builds in the current meta. You want to kind of bunker a point, hold it down for your team and let your dragon hunters or reapers do the damage, or even revenants. Revenants are very popular right now. With the condi builds, they have the viper revenant and the power revenant, of course. Looks like these three guys are in a party on our team. And those four guys are in a party. They have a pug necro. Let's try and snipe some builds, because this is ranked, you really want to go try hard mode. And actually see what you're up against, and change your skills accordingly. So... We'll be facing a lot of CC with the knockbacks, the fears, the in dazes, and the dazes from the Dragon Hunter as well. So we're going to want to take Armor of Earth here. And that's a Condi Reaper. You can tell by the three signets. That's a Trap Hunter. You can just tell because it's a Dragon Hunter. Uh, what's this guy? That's a Celestial Druid or a Pew Pew Druid. We can't really tell. And that just looks like... I don't really know, but yeah, I've also been doing pretty well in ranked, I got the champion paragon title, 150 wins as a guardian, competitive PvP conqueror, you can check all that stuff here. So, I almost have the engineer one, and the thief one as well, and the mesmo one, they're all at about 100. And then, what's my least played one? Revenant, uh, no... That doesn't count. My least played one is Warrior, pretty much, actually. I've actually, I've actually won more games as a Ranger than a Warrior, and I pretty much rarely play Ranger. What's this? Oh, that's a really cool thing. What do you get for that? That's a really cool title, if you cross six division thresholds. Oops, sorry. Gonna pop our air overload here for the swiftness. Should have done it a bit earlier. But, yep, we've got our team a little bit of swiftness here. So does the Revenant. He gives out a lot of swiftness. And we're going to push mid and hold mid. This is a really good map to hold on. Also, we can drop swirling winds to make our team like immune from projectiles. I'm going to blink in here and drop a swirl so they can't range pressure us very easily. Interrupt the necro and get a. Oh, we got CC'd quite a bit there. Let's try and heal up a bit here and pop our magnetic aura. We're above 90, so they can't apply conditions to us. You can see our health here. You can actually um, see the direct health. So if it goes below that counter, which it says in your traits, you can actually, you'll know when conditions can be applied to you. Use your water overload to remove conditions from you. Try and revive allies as they go down, if you can. It's a bit hard sometimes. And we just got interrupted again here. And again. I'm actually going to go invulnerable, try and revive this guy. He actually got stomped. That was a bit useless. So yep, while you go invulnerable, remember you can't capture the point, so got to watch out for that. And we're still above 90%, so we're going to try and stay on the point here for our team. And magnetic aura that. I'm going to blink up here and heal up just really quickly. Pop some auras, pop our swirling winds, so the dragon hun hunter can't like free cast us and shit on us. And let's pop our stab, stability. And we're actually going to go a bit low here, we got stunned again. Ah oh, shit. We're going to go down, jump off point here, someone's chasing us, that's bad. So I don't really know what happened there, our team does no damage output. They chased off point, one of them died. The ranger was not to be seen. The mesmer can't really do anything on a fight like that. You pretty much need dragon hunters and condi reapers in order to win fights. 
because they put out so much condi and power pressure. So the optimal team comp, like I said before, um, uh, Tempest, Bunker, Dagger Focus, or Dagger Warhorn with auras, and then a condi Chrono Bunker Mesmer, I mean, Chrono Bunker, and then Selly Druid or Selly Scrapper, because those are both very sustained heavy builds, and last a long time in fights, and then you want to run a Dragon Hunter, they're just normal Medi-Trapper Dragon Hunter, and what else was it? It was a Condi Reaper, yep, sorry. We almost got dropped below 90% for a bit there, let's just pressure this Dragon Hunter on point. Good target call. You can also get safe stumps with Obsidian Flesh, try and remember that. Let's heal up our allies here, and pop our Earth Overload, so get a bit of stability. And we immobilized everyone on point there, heal up, and we can get a safe stomp, it looks like, maybe. Sweet, he missed, let's go for the Ranger next. We dropped below 50, so we got a passive Armor of Earth thing. We wasted our Water Overload there, that was pretty bad. And let's, he's invulnerable, interrupt him twice, hopefully. Get a Swirling Winds up, immobilize him, Magnetic Aura. And he's down. Sweet. That was pretty good. Pretty good team fight at mid there. They didn't have their whole team. I'd like to thank the Ranger for that. He held a few of them up far. Coming back a little bit. Revenant's pushing home. That's a good rotation. So usually when they wipe a mid, the enemy team spawns here. They just push straight to home. So it's good to have one or two rotate back to home just in case. But in a position like this where I'm a dominating force and I do not go down very often, I can just hold the midpoint for quite a long time. I think this is a Shadow Mesmer. I do not know. And let's test that out. We interrupted him there, and he didn't get to use his portal. Unfortunate. Okay, so I thought he did use the portal there. Okay, we have to pop our Earth Overload. I couldn't really stomp there, and we can hopefully immobilize him. Nope, we didn't get him there. We can drop Firefield down there. Switch back to air, and... We're going to stay in air for a bit here, so we can air overload. We've got to watch this planktonic dude's health, so we can pop our rebound on him. Rebound brings an ally back to... If they take lethal damage, which means if they die, they get brought back to life or healed for a small amount. Not too bad. Let's blast some might here. A bit of might for our allies. Area might, you can see that there. And we're below 90%. So we're taking a bit of pressure. And let's just water overload there. And we took damage again. I mean, we got interrupted again. We actually own this point, so it's very beneficial for us to be fighting on it. And I'm not going to leave the point here, apart from <laughs> just then. But, yeah, so they, they're not going to decap it unless I'm dead. So that's pretty good for us. Let's focus. We shouldn't really be focusing the Mesmer, but there's no other targets here. So I'm going to pop a fire field down, pop my stability so I don't get interrupted. Switch to water, heal up, and... I think we should focus this target instead. He's, he's running the Scepter... The Scepter variant of this build, I reckon. He might be running air as well, but yeah, he's running Scepter Focus Ellie. Target range is pretty low. Pop our Magnetic Aura there. Our range is pulling off point. I'm still on point here. I'm just going to sit here and not lose it. Or oh, the Mesmer is going pretty low here. Hopefully we can get a Mobilize off. Fire Field down. Fire 2. And let's wait and fire long enough. You have to wait 5 seconds before you can do an Overload. And we'll get an aura here, a fire aura, oh, we, if we don't get interrupted. Okay. And let's... Oh, wait, this is a very bad target for us, but we're not losing the point either, so... Not bad. And let's see this guy. Let's heal our team up quite a bit. Always try and look at your teammates' health, so we're here, we're here with the planktonic and the sleepy guy. They're both pretty much high up, above 90%. Let's pop our water overload with some stability. We're not even going to move here, <laughs> and we healed that up. Sweet, our team is winning home. We've actually capped home. One of us died off point, which is not good. Okay, we're getting interrupted a fair bit here. Yeah, we actually are taking quite a bit of pressure here from the gravity well and all that. You've got to watch out for Mesmer Wells. They can actually counter you quite a bit. Let's heal up some more. Not doing too badly. And interrupt, and the Reaper came in. That's a bit of a trouble. If we don't, if we drop below 90%, we're pretty much screwed here. We're going to continue to try and stay on the point, so we don't lose the cap, because that's pretty much what it, what it's all about. We're going to pop Obsidian Flesh. Hopefully, the sleepy guy stays on point. 
just because I thought a lot of burst was coming and let's heal let's heal him up we got interrupted crap dodge that again you've got to watch for all these attacks let's condi remove and we have to pull off point here finally we actually lived for a long time let's try and CC the necro and it didn't work condi clear on us and we're healing we're healing up full health again let's push back onto mid hopefully our team follows us let's mobilize this guy try and burst him down off point here knock him down pop swelling winds so the ranger can't pew pew us and let's pop pop back on point here we actually don't own the point now so it's actually a bad idea for us to be fighting here but hopefully our team can come and back us up since we don't even own the point i'm just going to pop obsidian flesh just because there's no point anyway I'm going to jump off for a second here, and Necro is really low, but I'm going to heal the team up. We actually got two downs, so that's pretty sweet. I'm going to go for one stomp. Okay, sweet, I got that stomp, that's my finisher. The Mesmer came here, he had, that was a pretty good timing for him to come, because they still own the points. This is a very close game, we're actually both very close score right now as we speak. The range is killing Beast though, so we'll be a little bit ahead for now. And the Mesmer downed, 4v1, but still... <laughs> We're doing a pretty good job surviving there. So yeah, this build isn't damage focused, or like... I don't really like playing bunkery builds, but you do what you gotta do to climb ranks, am I right? There's two pushing home, oh, what the hell is that portal? I'm actually gonna stay mid and ping it for my team. i take that portal. Uh, yeah, I actually have to stay mid to make sure the team doesn't... Um, their team doesn't push into us, the Mesmer should go home. I'm gonna tell him that in chat. And I can maybe push off down here, check if they're incoming or anything. But I really don't want to lose mid, so I'll, I'll stay around here. So it looks like the Necro is coming in. Necro cannot beat you in a 1v1. That's guaranteed. Unless you're, like, bad at Ellie. But the Necro can't do anything against you. Uh, Dragon Hunters can help the Necros get you down, because they'll just they'll do all the power damage. And the Necros will finish you off with the Condi damage. But yeah, he's not going to apply shit to me, I can tell you that much. And we're just going to own the points here. We actually we lost a tick there. Went down a little bit. We can actually probably win the 1v1. Okay, we're below 90% now, though, which is a bit of a trouble. And let's heal up. And we won. Sweet. Your team is victorious. I just had to hold mid for a little while there while we got that. Let's see what we got. Objective neutralizer, assaulter, points captured. And we actually haven't played much Ellie this season. But that's pretty good. How'd the teams go? They were pretty balanced. Uh, seven kills. I don't think we died at once at all. Pretty tanky. Uh, damage received, 255k. Damage dealt, about the same as that. Condi damage dealt as well was a bit higher. And healing to allies, 262k. That's without the aura share, so that's pretty impressive. That's just from our water overloads and our heal skill. Condi's removed to ally and, and boons applied to allies is pretty high. Boons applied to self is pretty high. Boons re Condi's removed from self pretty high. And not too bad. So... Um, damage received minus healing to self is how much real damage you received, which was only 70,000. Which is not too bad, because we outhealed most of it. But yep, that was a pretty good game, pretty close as well. And yep, we got one pip from it. That was the Dagger Focus Bunker Elementalist build guide with gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos, and have a great day.